currently work at Teach for America as a director of Brooklyn programs, which essentially means I coach um, current core members, first and second year teachers. Okay, Cristel <laughs> Rodriguez, school social worker at East Harlem Scholars Academy. Thank you. I think it's, I think the Afro part is really important in that I'm recognizing um, the African roots that exist in my community as a, um, as a Dominican person. And then the Latino part, I think that's been mostly like, I've been put in that box and I'm like, all right, <laughs> um, once you're in America, you are, you know, you just kind of like are placed in that box because the language you speak, the food you eat, the religion you come from. And I accept that, but I think it's important for me to also like, actively recognize something that I think we try to, that I've felt in, in my community we've tried to hide or like not claim for a long time. What is it? The, our African roots. Why do you think that's so? I mean colonialism, messages of, um, you know, internalized oppression, internalized racism. Um, you know, I've heard there's just a lot of messages growing up around um, beauty and intellect being really attached to whiteness um, and therefore things that are the opposite of that are not something that we want to celebrate or or really like claim um, so oftentimes things like people who are dark skin call themselves Indio um, in DR at least I know that that's different in other parts of Latin America so I think that you know I just always grew up around those messages that were very implicit um, and once I started to recognize the fact that they were false, the damage they were causing, um, I felt that it was important to do what I can to reclaim it and to send a different message. Black Dominican. I think I have to put the black in front because just the term black throughout history is like negative. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of my blackness. Mm -hmm. And I'm also proud of my Dominican culture and that's mm -hmm. part of the Latina in me. Like mm -hmm. I speak Spanish, I love the music, I love the food. And it's just embracing it. and also for my own Latino family, mm -hmm. that sometimes that whole black sensitivity, the lighter skin, the better is kinda like, mm -hmm. No, I'm black Latina just to kinda educate people in one front and in the other to bring just the term black a different value. Like it is valuable. It is still beautiful. And just think about the childhood, I remember watching to be like, oh mom, I want to be an actress. And I was like, but you got to bake me a, a milk because only white people get the role. Wow. So it's like those, as a grown up, and mm -hmm. you know, thinking the profession that I took, seeing the image was presented to me and no one verbalizing to me. No, you are mm -hmm. beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. no, you're good enough. And that's what I try to like bring to my children. And when they like, yeah, so what are you? I'm black Dominican. And they're like, ah! <laughs> And I love that face because you get them curious and I'm like, oh, like you said, let's look at the map of the world. Yeah. Let's look at that picture. So, for example, when I've traveled abroad, specifically when I'm traveling Europe, I'm an American. And that's like, okay, that's the language I speak, the, the color of my passport, the attitude that I bring. Um, it's very clear that I'm an American. And then, you know, the question of like, well, where are you from comes up often. Um, and then I may get into it. If I'm, when I've traveled to Latin America, then I'm Dominican because I'm speaking Spanish or I'm. You know, I'm recognizing something that's similar. Um, so I think it just, it really depends on the location, where I am, where the people I'm surrounded by. I would use the term Afro-Latina um, here in the U.S. I think it's, it's, I think because of our, my understanding of our relationship with race and with um, the dichotomy of black and white, um, I think it makes. I think it's important to claim it here. I would also claim it in DR. Um, I actually haven't been to DR in a long time, um, but I feel like that's something that I would like. I would make it very explicit, based also on the history and like just the attitudes that are exist over there towards um, our African roots. I don't think I did. I don't recall celebrating Hispanic oh. Heritage Month. <laughs> Uh, I also taught primarily um, black Caribbean kids um, and I don't know that that necessarily means I don't celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month but um, I think you know of course first couple of years was just arriving I wasn't even you know though these months hit me right when they when, when when is the month it's like oh it's February 15th what are we doing for you know Black History Month um, and I think by my third year was when I started planning and at that point I was very focused on like how do I bring in 
um, more information about like the African diaspora in the U.S. So I think that if I stayed in the classroom longer, I would have gotten to that point, which which I was celebrating um, as Hispanic Heritage Month. It's something that I, I was ever aware of, or I recall ever being celebrated in my schools um, growing up, and. So it, it just wasn't really in my consciousness, like it would just come and all of a sudden, you know, commercials or, or people are doing, you know, HBO has a special on some Latino documentary and um, it, it would have been too late at that point as a teacher. We celebrate multicultural awareness, which is in October we have a big festival. We just try to create committee for the new school year, and one of the committee that came up is Hispanic Heritage March. So we do celebrate Women History Month and Black History Month. Last year we did nothing for Hispanic Heritage March, so I think it has to do with the staff population diversity. I think now we I mean, we have more Latino people. Like, hey, what about us? Like, we're not celebrating this, and also because Hispanic Heritage Month falls right early in the year, it's hard to make event happen on the get-go because mm -hmm. we trying to get routine set up and all this what we call priority mm -hmm. that's some time before we realize okay we we settle it's like october november i might have gotten to that point in terms of just the way that i was developing consciousness and a little bit more awareness around what are the things that i needed to bring to the classroom i think i always also always had a resistance around a month for celebrating my, my students' culture, or like my culture. I think that um, when I was in the classroom, I tried to do these things year-round in terms of, um, you know, the things we were reading, the things the things we were um, showing to kids. Um, so I, I, I don't know so much that I would have... I think it's, a, it's hard. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll just end it at that. Like the way I envision we have it, I want to yes. see like all the flags, Spanish speaking flags around it. I want to see people come in their costume, bring your food and share their heritage, but also kind of talk about the common theme and the differences. Like mm -hmm. those, the Spanish teachers is from Peru, right? But kids are like, Miss Hunter, do you go to Mexico to learn Spanish? She goes, no, I'm from Peru, I speak Spanish. And they're like, Mexico? <laughs> Again, <laughs> some of the only thing that's Spanish speaking is Mexico. So it's educating like what is Latin America and what does it mean from different ethnicity, different backgrounds, share the common language, but yet have different dialect. So what means something to you does not mean something to me. And like, oh. Some geography lessons? Yes. <laughs> this, we're in the world. Yes. <laughs> Maps. <laughs> Map. We need more of that. That would look and something I'm very happy our female culture embrace the curls. So I think we let the curls out, bring it out, definitely to see that that reflection. Talk about in the music like the drum, the history of the drum in our beat that we that we listen to, the different in the complexion, where a family like a family tree and trying to trace back our roots back. And a lot of people don't know about, you know, if you're Mexican, Central America, just Afro mm -hmm. in you, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I, this, I, this, I think this is a misconception. If you don't have curly hair or pelo malo, mm -hmm. then you're not black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I used to have these books in my classroom that were part English and part Spanish, um, and I should remember that because I was one of my one of my husband's friends was pregnant, they were having a baby shower, couldn't make it, but I sent her a book that was both English and Spanish. This is a white family. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you should still, your kids should still be learning Spanish. Um, so I remember that that's something that I think was really important in terms of sharing part of myself also um, with my students and just celebrating that aspect of my culture of was um, bringing in language and bringing in um, different ways of expressing ourselves. I always had like one Latino student in a classroom um, who could also you know share about share about her experience with that or his or his experience um, I think that we often do uh, what I've often seen is like these random like major people or like like figures um, to celebrate right Cesar Chavez or Sandra Cisneros or you know some Pedro Martinez right <laughs> um, and kids do a report on them or something like that and um, I think oftentimes we disconnect it from the whole and one thing that I would that I would encourage 
that I would do is focus on like how the Latino community has influenced, has affected what we consider American culture, what we consider America. Um, I think that we sometimes we separate those two things and you can't have one without the other. You don't have America as it is without Latinos being here for hundreds of years. So I would, that would be my focus today. And in, in, in any kind of way that I bring in culture would be how does the community, how does the whole um, impact, you know, who we are as Americans today. Thank you. I grew up in the Bronx. Like, I think Spanish was my real first language. <laughs> I can't speak it no more, but you know, you got to navigate. <laughs> Funniest, ridiculous joke. I'm so sorry. When I was little, I was taking Spanish. I might have been in third grade. I was taking Spanish class. And the teacher said, how do you say excuse me in Spanish? And I was like, oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. And she was like, okay, how do you say it? I was like, excuse me. <laughs> No. no. <laughs>